so what this child essentially presents with a uh, unilateral left-sided membranous cataract. There's no his prior history of um, any trauma or any previous red eye inflammation. The child's entirely healthy and um, there is a some posterior sneaky there that you can see and a little bit of band keratopathy but the other eye is completely normal uh, and there's, uh, there's no other signs of inflammation in this eye at all. So we're not entirely sure what happened. Um, we were wondering whether there was some previous um, unseen in trauma and that can definitely happen sometimes with children. So uh, the, the lens is mostly resorbed so we have mostly a fibrous area centrally so we're going to remove um, remove that plaque and place a lens in the sulcus and capture it. And I'm only using two small incisions to make this part easier. I will enlarge the superior wound to put the eye well in. So, so I'm just uh, placed a bit of viscoelastic underneath the iris here. And everything else here looks very good. Just because we're placing, we're going to be placing this lens in the sulcus. I just want to make sure that the entire sulcus is free. Uh, because otherwise if you don't and if there are any adhesions what ends up happening is the lens can become decentered. So I'm looking at what the, um, the spatula is doing and I'm also feeling and I don't feel anything there. What I'll do is I'm actually going to do is the cutter to um, do the rexus because there is a there's a fibrotic plaque, so I don't think the utrata will do very well there. So I'm going to see if I can just we're just going to move on to do the uh, with the vitrector first. So I'm just going in now to, to enlarge the calcerexis. As you can see, there's not much room here. This is the poster capsule just behind me. So normally you wouldn't remove the capsule like this but because the anterior and posterior capsule have been fused, it's okay to do it this way. You can see there's a, a fold here in the capsule. Some of this material is very calcific. And there's this sort of calcific, it's almost crystalline material here that's just coming loose. Yeah, it looks almost like crystals. Now we are gonna put the lens in the, um, in the sulcus, but the, the reason for removing all of this cortical material is that it can come out of the bag later, prolapse into the visual axis. Uh, okay. So as much as possible, it's better to remove it now. Yeah, I'm trying not to uh, cut any of this material away. I'd like to aspirate it because we're gonna open up the posterior capsule before we, we, we can either um, place the, the lens before or after a vitrectomy. Might be easier to do it before the vitrectomy. Um, so, and I'm going to just switch my infusion and my irrigation as well. You can see just next to where my cutter is, 
the interior and the posterior capsule are fused together and we're going to use that to keep everything um, stable. More of this very crystalline material here. It really is, I don't know if it comes out on the microscope, but it's very, very brightly colored and so it has a very iridescent uh, sheen to it. Can I get the um, viscoelastic, please? Yeah, now you can turn it off, okay? As it's turned off, I just place a little bit in there and then it just stabilizes it. So again, I don't like to have the chamber shallow. We're just going to complete the removal of the rest of this material here. Just most of it has been removed. All that's left is this fibrotic material. And um, I think we can open the lens now. So we're going to have to keep some of this fibrotic material. But I think we've removed enough. We can turn off the infusion now. The advantage of doing this now is that because the posterior capsule is not open, it's easier to place the lens. And we'll put a little bit of viscoelastic in the, in the sulcus. So if we're using a folding lens, um, it's easier if we just enlarge it just a little bit more. So this is the 2.75 keratome. And this is a plus, so we're going to be using a three-piece lens for the sulcus. And once it's in place, we're going to cut the, open the posterior capsule, just do an anterior vitrectomy. So we're just going to introduce this in the eye, um, get some counter traction here, and then make sure the lens goes into the sulcus, pulling it out. So the lens is in the sulcus right now. So right now, going underneath to make an opening in the posterior capsule. So um, when the incisions are smaller, there's a much um, th there's a much more stable chamber. So I'm trying to close the large incision somewhat. And because I enlarged the wound, I'm going to put in three sutures in total.
the stitch at the infusion. Um, last time that got cut or pulled out, but this time we'll hopefully, we'll hopefully use that. Everything we're using is 10 0 um, Vicro. I'm just going to keep this along so that's less likely to. Sometimes when you're pushing the infusion in, it gets pushed aside or gets cut. So now we're going to um, open the poster capsule and do a vitrectomy and also remove that membrane as much as possible. So I'm making sure my cutter is on. And I want to go underneath the, the eye well. Now I've already made that opening there, you can see. So you work around the edges to enlarge the posterior opening. I just asked a question about the size. You don't need to remove all of that white material. You just have to remove enough that you can safely place the IOL uh, behind it and capture it inside. Um, that fibrous material really helps to stabilize the um, IOL. And there's some whitish um, areas in the red reflex here. And I can't see what they are. They're fairly posterior. So I'm not going to go after them. They may represent old blood or very old vitritis. I can't tell. Sorry, you see blood in the vitreous? It, it might be, yes. Yeah. But it's very far back and I don't have a biome. Uh, I'm I'm so I'm only going to go after what I can see. So I'm just checking right now. And the opening is still too small to capture the implant. So I'm going to enlarge it some more. So this goes just tucking one side in, okay, 
and then we're just going to push the lens and there's the other side okay so the lens is in the sulcus right now it's a little bit decentered but I don't want to cut this too much the capsule will tear so I think it's in good position and it's nicely captured there so it won't move anymore okay so we're just going to um, suture get the tenno again which is going to suture the main wound the, the reason for capturing helps keep the lens centered and also helps keep it away from the iris. Uh, if, if you don't leave it in viscoelastic and your IOP won't go up um, and the pressure hasn't remained low on this eye so we had a little bit of blood I don't know if you saw that from the iris earlier so it's not going to bleed now because we haven't let the pressure in the eye go down so and if there's no viscoelastic the pressure shouldn't go up so I don't routinely put them on like myocol or anything I don't really need to you know we don't really need to do that there so the lens is centered, decentered slightly temporally, but I think that if we go in, the risk is ripping there and the lens might become destable. So I'm really happy with that there. Um, I'm happy with the lens in its current position. And centrally, um, it'll be well centered in the pupil. Give me the injections, please. So we're just injecting uh, dexamethasone and I stopped using gentamicin as much because it can if there's a theoretical risk of it causing retinal damage. So not that you would do that here, but uh, um, I'd rather avoid using that agent at all. So Vaseline, there's no such risk. So we just have to watch her post-op for any inflammation, okay? Um, so we, she may need um, more steroid. Uh, so we just have to watch and see. Okay, great. Thank you very much.